Most people, even if they did not grow up in the church, are familiar with two Bible verses. Psalm 23, 4 and John 3, 16. And I'll use the NIV version so that they sound the most recognizable. Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But here's a verse that we should be familiar with, however. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And this I'll use the NRSV version because that's what I like to use for my sermons. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. We encounter a lot of darkness in this world. We find ourselves falling for this darkness whenever it comes across us from time to time like reading for the Dallas Cowboys, for instance. But here's an example of how we accidentally fall into this trap of temptation. Now, I consider myself a very level-headed guy, but I have a boiling point. We all have a boiling point. Our internet had been out for about two days. Both my wife and I, we do need the internet for our jobs. This is not just a minor inconvenience for us because she's a teacher. She needs it to make up lesson plans, to enter grades into the portal, to contact parents. I need it because of being a pastor, contacting people, emails, uh, sermon preparation. So we do need the internet as well as we're both taking college courses that are online. So the first day of this issue, I had been passed around several times by the company, put on hold each time, until finally I thought it would be resolved the next day. Next day comes and goes, no internet. So I call in the evening. I had given them all day, I had been patient, gave them the benefit of the doubt that they were going to fix it, and so I call them uh, roughly before their close of business hours, because I'm like, we need the internet. Once again, I'm on hold even longer this time because it's the evening. Everybody's trying to call. Once again, being passed back and forth, back and forth, representative to representative, until finally I get this guy that knows what he's doing. It seems like it's all going great. He's explaining what's wrong, and I think he's doing this wonderful job. I tell him he's doing a wonderful job. And so he's explaining all this, and he says, hey, I need to talk to my team. I'm going to put you on hold for a second, but I'll be right back. I say, yeah, man, yeah, you do what you got to do. I'm on hold for a little bit, and I hear, hello, this is Martin. How may I help you? And I pause, and I said, where's the guy I was just talking to? He said, I don't know. I saw red, because I thought I had this guy that was going to help me, and I flipped. All thoughts of holiness, all my patience was gone. I told this poor guy who the only wrong he did was his job. He had answered the phone just like he was supposed to. I told this poor man that everyone who worked for this company, who I will remain nameless in this video, I told him everybody that worked for this company was an idiot. And I hung up. And I I felt terrible. I feel, I feel so bad about it. Because I was like, I'm a preacher. I should not have flipped out like that. And even if I hadn't been a preacher, that was not the right thing to do. This guy was just doing his job. But... I had had it. I had two days of patience until I just kept boiling and boiling until I had boiled over. Temptations try to trip us up all the time. Home alone, surfing the internet, being a little too friendly with a coworker, stressful situations just like me talking to the internet company, hiding out with your friends when they start doing things that you aren't comfortable with. Where do we draw the line in our lives? Sometimes we cross it before we even realize we crossed it. Sin is like reckless driving. We might have this fast, cool car, but over time, revving the engine, spinning the tires, drifting around the corners, that wears a car down. The next thing you know, that car that was so cool, it's beaten up. It sounds like an old washing machine. It's a hunk of junk then. Or even worse, we totaled it. Another story from myself, uh, this one from the past. I was 17 years old, probably around this time, I think, and I was driving some friends home from school. And they said, hey, let's go hill hopping. And uh, 
Uh, well, let's set the scene up for you first. I drove a 1994 Pontiac Grand Am. It was a midnight blue color. It was pretty cool. I liked it. It was a fine car, and uh, it wasn't a sporty hill hopper, though. Even though it was a 94 Pontiac Grand Am, uh, it was not a Fast and the Furious car. You know what I mean? It wasn't the thing you would think of a teenager street racing or hill hopping in. I think the speedometer only went to 90. But I did, I did, I did love this car, so... Wanting to be cool, even though it wasn't a cool car, I went along with it. I got big air on this hill, and this little car, it just bottoms out big time. And the steering was never the same after that. It made me sick because I loved that car, and I don't think I don't think it ran much longer after that. So I, it was probably the beginning of the end for that poor little car, but that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was that a friend of ours in school had been killed in a car accident from speeding. Something very similar to what we were doing there. Not terribly long before. So I should have known better. I should have not tested fate. But like I said, we can cross a line and not even realize it until it is too late. I thank God, I thank God that the only thing that hurt that day was my car and my pride. And it wasn't my friends and I. But let's turn to the scripture. Let's turn to the scripture and see what the Bible says about all this. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 to 16. See, the Lord's hand is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. Rather, your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wickedness. No one brings suit justly, no one goes to the law honestly. They rely on empty pleas, they speak lies, conceiving mischief and begetting iniquity. They, they hatch adder's eggs and weave the spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs dies, and the crushed egg hatches out a viper. Their webs cannot serve as clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their works are works of iniquity, and deeds of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they rush to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they do not know. And there is no justice in their paths. Their roads they have made crooked. No one who walks in them knows peace. Therefore justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We wait for light, and lo, there is darkness. And for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope like the blind along a wall. And groping like those who have no eyes, we stumble at noon as in the twilight among the vigorous, as though we were dead. We all growl like bears, like doves we moan, moan mournfully. We wait for justice, but there is none, for salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions before you are many, and our sins testify against us. Our transgressions indeed are with us, and we know our iniquities. Transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning away from following our God, talking oppression and revolt, conceiving lying words, and uttering them from the heart. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands at a distance. For truth stumbles in the public square, and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking, and whoever turns from evil is despoiled. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him, that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one, and was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm brought him victory, and his righteousness upheld it. Verse 1 of Isaiah 59 said, See, the Lord's hand is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But we have to realize that sin is a barrier between us and God. God is a God of justice. But we, as a fallen creature, we do not carry out justice. That's the problem. God is justice, but we do not bring justice on ourselves. We do not carry justice with us. I look at the world around us. I look at what we as a culture value. I look at myself and what I value. 
It's not always a picture perfect view in our world. God is holy, but we fall short, way short of holiness. Sometimes we fall short of holiness and brag about it, or we advocate for it. That is how far gone our culture seems. Isaiah likens us to viper's eggs. Even though Isaiah was talking about a culture thousands of years ago, this fits us. And whoever eats their eggs dies. And the crushed egg hatches out a viper. Think about that. We eat these eggs and these vipers hatch out in our stomachs. He said that we weave webs like spiders and we try to use those webs as clothing. But we only weave iniquity. We only weave violence and those do not cover us in modesty. We need to remember that. We're weaving these webs and we're hiding ourselves in it. These spiders are coming to devour us. I look at our society, and we're like a society that Isaiah had described. We run to evil. We shed innocent blood. We are perverse, and we have desolation and destruction in our highways. We don't know peace. We don't live for justice. In the words of Isaiah in verse 9, we wait for light, and lo, there is darkness, and for brightness but we walk in gloom. This was written somewhere in 700 to 600 BCE, but it could have described 21st century America. Instead, we blunder around in our darkness. We wait for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. That was Isaiah verse 11. Even though Isaiah said society spoke of oppression, revolting, lying in their heart, even though the people did not live for peace and justice and righteousness, even though they did not live in truth, but instead lived in evil, God planned to bring righteousness through himself. God was appalled, but instead of bringing judgment, God planned to bring victory through his own works. That is key. That is salvation. It is through God's works. Let's go to our next scripture. Let's turn to the gospel of John now. Let's see that salvation. In John chapter 12, we'll read verses 27 to 36, and then we will skip ahead to verses 44 to 50. As soon as I find it here, I'm coming. John chapter 12, verses 27 to 36. Now my soul was troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. Now let's skip ahead to verses 44 to 50. Then Jesus cried aloud, whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. 
The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. On the last day, the word that I have spoken will serve as a judge. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment that what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. God said that his name was glorified through Jesus. That was the salvation that Isaiah was prophesying about. Those who heard the voice said it was like thunder. Jesus furthered the point by saying in John chapter 12, verse 31, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. Satan, darkness, sin, those things have no power because the declaration of the cross is our victory. Jesus added in verse 32, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus is bringing friends with him to heaven. We are welcome to follow him because salvation is offered to all people. But it's offered. It's not forced upon. It's offered. Jesus wants willing followers. He doesn't want slaves. He doesn't want people captive. He wants willing followers. It's offered, but it's not forced upon us. Salvation, grace is offered, but it's not forced upon us. Jesus concluded that the light was on the earth a little longer. He told those listening to follow that light so darkness, it wouldn't overtake them. Those that walk in the darkness, they don't know what they're doing. A remark that sends chills down my spine. Darkness brings hell on earth and it continues to lead to hell. But those in darkness don't realize that because they are blind to the hurt they are causing themselves. They're blinded by this darkness. Drunkenness seems fun at first. An affair seems fun at first. Pornography seems fun at first. Getting high seems fun at first. Letting anger run freely, that seems so free at first. But those things become a lifestyle of pain and loneliness that hurts ourselves and it hurts those around us. But Jesus said, while you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of the light. Jesus is the way to God because Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus himself said he came to bring light to the world and those who believe will not remain in the darkness. Jesus said he did not come to judge those in darkness, but to offer light to those to find their way. This light guides in that darkness. Those who don't listen, they're condemning themselves because they had the opportunity to follow the light. They were offered that light. So the judgment from God is what they chose themselves. But those who follow Christ have eternal life. Jesus said, when, what, what I speak, therefore I speak just as the Father has told me. These are the words of the living God. This is all telling us about the power of the cross. What if we are condemning ourselves by wandering around in the darkness? What do we do? We claim that power from the cross. That's what we do. We are going to pray in a little bit here. But I want you to hear me out. If you are lost in a sin you cannot escape, I want you to pray with me. If you have never turned your life to Christ, I want you to pray with me. If you accepted Christ years ago, but you haven't walked that closely with him, pray with me. If you have lived with one foot in and one foot out of this darkness, pray with me. If you have been faithful churchgoer for years, but lately you haven't felt that close to God, pray with me. To go back to a car analogy, this was going to be a sermon for a car show. Have you ever drove somewhere unfamiliar at night? And something about the dark just distorts our perception. And the roads, they look different for some reason. So if you're not familiar with the area, it can really throw you off driving at night. Sin can do that to us as believers. It can throw us off and it can make it harder for us to feel God in our presence because we have lost ourselves in this darkness again. 
God did not abandon us. We abandoned God. We need to reclaim that power in the cross. We need to show the darkness who the real boss is. Satan was defeated 2,000 years ago. But he just hasn't figured that out yet. Don't leave this video without becoming a child of the light. Follow the light. No longer wander around in the darkness. Follow the light. You might feel like you're in bondage with sin, but that is a lie from the devil. Victory is in the cross. Satan wants you to think you can't escape this battle. Satan wants you to think you can't escape the bottle or drugs or pornography or lust or anger or gambling. Satan wants you to think, I guess this is just who I am. I'm defeated. That is a lie. That lie is an excuse to keep living in that bondage. God frees us from that bondage. Tonight, we break free. Tonight, we claim victory in Jesus Christ. As I said, if you feel any of the ways that I said a little bit ago, I want you to pray. Dear Lord, I am tired of this darkness. I am tired of the darkness around me. I am tired of wandering around lost. Lord, I want to be a child of the light. Lord, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Lord, I want to breathe in your spirit. Lord, I want to claim victory in you. Dear God, thank you for dying for my sins. I want to live in victory. I no longer want to live in the defeat of Satan. I want to no longer want to live in those lies. Lord, I want to breathe you in. I want to be washed clean by the blood of your sacrifice. And may I claim victory in your resurrection. You bring life. And I want to be alive in you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, wear it proudly. Wear it on your sleeves. Wear it boldly. Because you have claimed victory in Jesus Christ. It's through God's work we are saved. Satan holds no power over us. Sin holds no power over us. Darkness holds no power over us. Because we are children of God through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember, God loves you. I love you. Have a blessed week.